hitchhiked to Boulder and spent the next three or four months using Boulder as my home base and just running all around the Rocky Mountains in my second Kerouac inspired trip across the country. Knowing what I know now, I think I should have waited till the summer of 1982. Uh, Brian Hesed has written a book about what was going on in Boulder, Colorado in the summer of 82. And I'd like to invite him up to read, uh, just so we could get a taste of that. Please welcome Brian Hesed. Hey Sparrow, that was great. <laughs> so yeah, we just did um, some of this book, Hitchhiker's Guide to Jack Kerouac, about this uh, historic summit event that took place in Boulder in 82 that had, you know, at, well, as uh, Holmes put it, we had come from all over the country, from all periods of Kerouac's life, and more of us were together than had ever been in one place at one time before. And I was lucky enough to uh, hitchhike to this thing uh, as a 21-year-old, and uh, so I some of you were there for some of the earlier stuff for this, and this is, and then you're all asking, how did this happen? Well, here's the opening of the book and how this happened. My first year at NYU, I met my hero, concert promoter Bill Graham, and worked my way onto his Rolling Stones tour in 1981. By this second summer abroad in 82, it seemed like time to return to the grounding homeland and city that launched me into America. Vancouver, Canada, with the summer's great notion to meet my second biggest hero, Ken Kesey, come hell or high Kool-Aid. <laughs> so. Turns out, that month, my girlfriend's little sister was turning 18, and I thought in high time, big brother-in-law gave her some grown-up books to help her on her way. So I went out to pick up on the road and a couple of others. No Hunter Thompson, mind you. But Jack, Jack's love of the earth, on life, and the journey, that was what her just blossoming soul was in need of at this fertile time. So I made a quick run to the nearest cool bookstore in West, Va West End, Vancouver, went to the fiction section and grabbed it on the road, and wait, what? There's no Jack? At all? I went to the counter and asked, and they looked him up and went, nope, we don't have any books by him. Huh? I shook my head, thought, no problem. Went to the next bookstore. Remember when there used to be a lot of bookstores? <laughs> Over to the K's, Kale, Keeler, Kennedy, and no Kerouac. What? Find the information desk again. Um, do you guys have On the Road by Jack Kerouac? Who? <laughs> and again, I walk out shaking my head at Canada grumbly reminding myself why I left in the first damn place. <clears throat> but since New York and Bill Graham taught me no is not an option, I persevered. On to the next door. Damn, you gotta be kidding me. After a couple hours of this, I was a little too familiar with every author from Kafka to King. So by about the sixth place, I just skipped the fiction section and went straight, straight to the help kiosk. Do you guys have, and as I looked up at the young man and woman behind the counter, right in between their heads, I saw this giant poster on the wall. With Ferlin Getty, Burroughs, McClure, Creeley, Corson, Ginsburg, Hoffman, Timothy Leary, Robert Frank, Gary Snyder, Ted Berrigan. And there in large print, Ken Kesey. And in tiny print at the bottom, partially funded by the Grateful Dead. What? <laughs> so right away I got on the phone before I got on the road. And that's how this book starts. And it's a whole heck of an adventure that ends up in Kesey's living room back in Oregon. So that went well. <laughs> so uh, I just did a bunch of that. So I'll do a little one other thing here. Uh, Levi's Jeans, of all things, hired me to write some beat prose because they were trying to connect back to the original, you know, jean-wearing cool people. And, uh, 
And so, and, and this was like the late 90s and early 2000s. So we were doing tons of um, beat shows in New York at the time, and uh, it was great. And so I thought, well, I'll do sort of a composite of a beat show. So this was the kind of shows that uh, Andy Kloss, and I'm so honored to be in the room with this guy, let alone Sharon Stane, a legend in the words in America. Uh, and so these are the kind of shows that he grew up on and I came along a little later. Lights dimmed, room hushed. MC at silhouette at center stage, blessing the packed room of book reading, edge surfing hipsters from all over the world, thanks to email and websites and a collective unconscious that keeps them striving for the new and where the heart pounds, the eyes twinkle, and the women aren't treated like girls and men have self-confidence without conceit. Take note. The lively linguist at the microphone calls up John Cassidy, son of a beat, Neil, icon of time, his nearly white faded jeans matching his white halo hair, begins to spin a web of the road of wanderlust, soul searching, pine climbing, spine needling pursuits of what's through the next door, who's at the next table, and when's the next epiphany drifting away in the eyes of another as everything dissolves into a candlelit dream of two people's faces. And then Breath Cox comes up, down from Cherry Valley, trim and straight-legged in cowboy confidence, reading classic couplets in a sensuous, lip-curling elegance that stops even the waitresses in their round. The poetry attenuating the vibe and vibrating the antennas until every head is quivering. Dancing butterfly imagery spins from the lips all night. The rooms transform, the dreams alive. A band starts up, subtle at first, and then two dancers on stage. And the beats jamming jazz man David Amram is massaging the grand as he improvises Pull My Daisy, with saxophone shades weaving in from the corners, and the brick wall backdrop dancing with shadows of clarinet solos as more cats stream into the scene and fall into the jam, the jambe, the congas, the violin and the bow. A poet, a prankster, a king and a queen, a flirt, a chat, you know what I mean on your feet dancing, warmed by the light of a new beam beside you, dancing off demons with a smile inside you, dancing with purpose in a circle of light, in a bass thumping, heart pounding, soul swirling twirl, to dance above the diamond earth, to stoke the improbable, light the impossible, fan the invisible, be the invincible, Spirit, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Brian Hassett, Hitchhiker's Guide to Jack Kerouac. Look for it. You put a little effort out there. Where can you get it? Right here from me. Right Hell, you can get it from.